Hey guys, how's it going? It's Troy D from the Troy D 24-7 Mall and today I'm going to drop the ultimate beginner's guide to the niche perfume world as well as buying perfumes from the niche perfume world. Let's hit it. We all started from designer perfumes. For me, I started with Michael Jordan when I was like really young and then I graduated to Polo Sport, Tommy Hilfiger, Izzy Miyake, Paco Rabanne, Hugo Boss. A lot of those are still pretty good today but they really worked wonders back in the day when they just came out. Now, one of the examples of those colognes that really changed my life is Bleu de Chanel. And this thing, when it came out, what was that, 2010, was so amazing. Nothing smelled like it and nothing performed like it. And to this day, people are still buying it because it's very, very unique among the rest. Now, the niche fragrance world pushes the envelope by making perfumes. And with a higher concentration, whether it's an eau de parfum with a higher concentration or an extract de parfum or even oils or oil attars with like more perfume concentration. And the reason for this is because in the niche world, we're all about performance as well. Take, for example, Spice Bomb, which is one of my favorite designer scents. Now, this thing I'll spray like maybe six times and it'll probably last me uh, maybe four or five hours. And uh, if I go to somewhere where I'm competing with somebody else's smell, yeah, it, it might get overpowered or it might be, it might work for like maybe the first like two to three hours. But with niche, the performance is way crazier, way better. Matter of fact, I've got a story about the uh, MFK Baccarat 540 Extrait de Parfum. This is the most concentrated perfume out there. When I first had this, I was such a newbie that I sprayed six times. I used this and I put six times all over me. And that was such a bad idea. My wife almost choked in the car and my daughter actually said that her tummy was aching after smelling me over and over in the car. We even walked into an Italian restaurant and it's supposed to smell like an Italian restaurant, but no, the whole restaurant smelled like Baccarat Rouge 540 because I made the mistake. When I first sprayed it, I thought it was weak. Wrong, I was so wrong. Apparently when I checked Fragrantica, which does reviews, that one spray of this is equal to three sprays of an eau de parfum. A lot of people also love the niche world because they resonate with the messages of these houses. The thing is the house of perfumes, there's just so many at this point and they make so much perfume. I'm talking about maybe 20 perfumes or more per house. And a lot of people, they really do resonate. Like for example, you got bond number nine, which is from New York. And you know, their perfumes are basically the streets of New York. Manhattan, Lafayette. And so if you want a little piece of New York, you've got bond number nine right here. And then there's people that love Clive Christian because it's the most expensive in the world, or at least that's their branding. You know, you got the crown right here, looks really expensive. And so if you got an expensive lifestyle, then this will be perfect for you. You're gonna resonate with this house. The other thing that separates the niche world as well is the bottles. They're just a lot more amazing. I don't know, this is just me, but I mean, look at these. Look at these bottles. They're amazing. They're amazing displays. I mean, they're way better than my Lacoste bottle and my Polo Sport bottles from, from back in the day. These are just great looking and they're great to just add, a, a, put in like a, like a, you know, like a cabinet or like a drawer or like a display case. This, this is just amazing. Ultimately, I think that a lot of people kind of migrate between the designer to the niche world for a lot of reasons, but for me, it's more of sophistication. I believe that people just become more sophisticated as maybe time goes by and they get into the niche world for those same reasons. Maybe you just bought a new car that's more sophisticated than your rundown truck. Maybe you took a trip that you could never forget. Maybe you went to the Amalfi Coast. Maybe you went to London. Maybe you went to Dubai and it really hit you. And you want a scent that really reminds you of those places. You want a scent that when you close your eyes, it teleports you to those places. Maybe you start eating Wagyu. Maybe you like fine food. Maybe you like omakase. And you just, you appreciate the finer details of things. Maybe you got yourself a $2,000 Gucci jacket complete with the embroidery, the leather, the Sherpa and all these like finer details that make it look like a $2,000 jacket. Either way, if your life is becoming more sophisticated and you want more uniqueness out of it, I believe the niche fragrance world is perfect for you. Now, the problem is that because there are so many houses 
And of course, we don't have all the income to buy them all together. We must need a guide to navigate through this world so we can be able to make the best choices possible when we start. Now, before you go all out, I know you guys are excited about this fragrance world. Let's talk about my guide first because this is an important thing. You got to listen to this before you move on. Number one is go to a store and try it. In America, we've got Saks Fifth Avenue, we got Neiman Marcus, we got Sephora, um, and we got you know specialized like scent places like uh, Scent Bar in LA. Um, and I know in London, you've got Selfridges, you've got Harrods. Now, the key here is to not get intimidated by these places. They're supposed to look posh and all of that and snobby. But remember guys that it's their job to provide you with all the information for you to make your purchase. When I go to these places, I just, if they give me that kind of vibe that like, oh, you know what, we're kind of posh and snobby, I just ignore that. I just go straight to the fragrances or I ask for test strips and I start putting them on. I'm kind of like a kid in the candy store, but at the same time, I'm really serious because you know it's like 100 to 200 dollars of my hard-earned money so i gotta really smell it i gotta really test it i gotta really feel it if this is worth my my money so make sure you try as much out and take your time don't rush things make sure you try everything out at the store itself another thing you can do is to ask for samples which are you know these things they'll give this to you in like these little vials but this is great because you get to take it home and you get to try it. So this one's from Agua de Parma. There was a nice lady at Bloomingdale's that literally, you know, took me to a tour of the, all their perfumes, the entire lineup, she took me through it. And at the end of it, she gave me a lot of these samples because she knows that, hey, this guy has to try it first before he commits. So ask for samples, guys, okay? In most cases, they are free and people will definitely give you samples. Now in the niche world, there are samples that aren't free. You'll have to buy them. And so one of my tips is to go to the actual perfume houses site because they are selling samples for like five bucks to six bucks and you'll get the same vials like these. Sometimes you'll have to do that for rarer perfumes or perfumes are just, you know, the regular stores just won't give you a free spot. They won't, they won't, they won't help you out that way. I know that there's a perfume house called Bodicea that's like selling samples for like 15 quid and that's kind of expensive but hey they got those thousand dollar perfumes so if you want to smell like a thousand dollar perfume you want to try that out then get a sample it's only like 15 quid there's also something called a discovery set which is really cool as well where these perfume houses will bundle up maybe two or three 10 milliliter samples of their best stuff or in some cases they'll make you customize um, a box full of these like discovery sets and sell it. Now I got a few discovery sets coming in the mail and one of them is like, man, the presentation is just amazing. It comes with like a silver or a gunmetal type uh, atomizer and it comes with like three vials of 10 milliliters that I, you know, it's kind of like a travel spray. And that works for me. That totally works for me because I would rather have that than like buy one bottle immediately for whatever price that is. One of those websites that helped me as well is like basenotes.net, Fragrantica, basically review sites. If you uh, Google a keyword of any type of fragrance, you'll see that there's like these big websites like Fragrantica that actually has a breakdown of all the notes. But more importantly, it's got um, a breakdown too of like, you know, is it usable for day, night, winter, summer, and you've got real reviews from a bunch of people out there. Yes, it is subjective, however, some of those reviews really, really helped me because some of them are honest to goodness. If they hate it, they hate it. If they love it, they're gonna show it. And those reviews really helped me. And of course, there's YouTubers like myself. A lot of YouTubers like myself go through the experience, we go through the process, we try out the scents, we buy the scents for you. So you don't need to do it yourself and go through the trial and error process. You can learn from a lot of what we're saying and apply that to your purchases. Another thing is Facebook groups. Now, if you're a member of Facebook like myself, join Facebook groups. There's a lot of fragrance, little niche fragrance groups out there. There's actually fragrance groups just on one house or one brand. 
there's FragCom, for example, which is really amazing. And you'll learn a lot. You can ask all these questions and there's so many people, so many resources that are gonna give you those answers. Another big thing for me are discount websites. Now, I love them because A, they sell stuff at sometimes below what the main stores are selling at. And number two, sometimes they have these amazing deals. They'll do like a buy one, get one at 25% off. Sometimes they discount heavy, like 50 off. And sometimes they'll just like give out like payment plans, which is pretty crazy. I'm sure that'll work with you guys are addicted to this stuff. You know, they'll do like a, a one or two months to pay, which is really crazy. And sometimes I really do go to the retail sites because they have some amazing stuff. Sometimes they'll give a gift card when you do a, a retail purchase, like for example, last Black Friday, I got like so many gift cards from Bloomingdale's just for buying the already discounted perfumes. So I got a gift card that I can use at some point to buy myself either the, you know new perfumes or something else from Bloomingdale's. Awesome. Another tip is buy pre-owned. So there's a lot of people that unfortunately have bought so many perfumes that they realize they can't use it all or they can't finish it. Because let's face it guys, it's 20 sprays per mil, 100 ml, that's a lot. Unless that's your only perfume, I don't think you're gonna finish that, not in a year. But there are some people that realize that and they just wanna sell their bottles. See this right here? I got this pre-owned. But guess what? It was about It's about 80% down, I guess and I got it for a hundred dollars or more off retail and that was really really worth it. Now some guys might hate me here but another alternative guys is to buy clones. Not colognes, I'm talking about clones. Clones as in the Clone Wars from Star Wars. Stuff like this, this is only thirty dollars okay and a lot of people are saying that it's very similar to the scent of the real thing and of course it's not but it's kind of close. Now, who's going to find out really? Unless you're a real connoisseur about this stuff, nobody's going to find out. A lot of people are just going to appreciate the scent. So, you know, clones also matter, I think, for the budget. This is only 30 bucks. And I, mean, I can just spray this right now because it's only 30 bucks. I can just, I can douse myself with this stuff. And another tip for me is to buy ahead of the season. So don't buy fall and winter fragrances like right now that it's getting cold. Buy spring summer fragrances that are highly discounted right now or being sold at the gray market buy them right now because people just want them gone they're not even using it but i don't know that's just my style i buy winter clothing when it's summer so i can like really get some amazing deals at the same time i do buy summer gear when it's winter i'm not gonna go out and buy like a marmot jacket at this point or a montclair jacket because i bought one back in the summer for cheap and finally you can also get what we call is decants so decants are like miniature or small vials that you know basically a lot of people when they buy their bottles they make a little bit of their money back by selling different milliliter quantities of those perfumes and they're selling them in decant bottles so just make sure that those guys actually have those bottles all right before you order but yeah, that's another way. It's sort of like getting a sample, but in a bigger amount. You can get like a 10 milliliter, which is gonna last you a while. And last but not the least, my favorite thing to do is I blind buy. What that means is that you're gonna take a leap of faith and you're just, without smelling something, just by reading what's online or listening to YouTubers or looking at the Facebook groups, you're gonna buy it. I'm happy to say that more than 95% of my collection, I blind bought and I do not regret a thing. There's something fun about trusting your gut and looking at what you see and seeing how it goes. I don't recommend it all the time. However, it's just fun. It's a fun thing to do. I like checking my mail and opening it up and checking the packaging and opening and just, just imagining what a scent would smell like based on what I know and then actually trying it out. So blind buying is pretty cool to me. So I get asked like, what if like I only had like three fragrances that I could buy as of the moment because I'm a beginner, I don't want to take an amazing amount of risk. Okay, fine. So the first thing I would do is to continue the designer success that I have. Well, that's what I did. And I purchased a mass appealing niche fragrance. This is where like stuff like Aventus comes in. 
Silver Mountain Water. All right, bond number nine. All these like houses kind of go into this like mass appealing thing. And the reason for being is because you really won't get a lot of buyer's remorse when you buy these perfumes. You'll always get the compliments. You'll always get people be like, wow, you smell great. You put them on and you walk around and you feel great. So it's like, it's like a great start. It's a great first step to buying a niche perfume. The second thing, if I had a second choice, would be functional. I would be a little bit more specific now. I would be like, well, I want something dark, okay? I want something gourmandy. If you don't know what gourmandy is, it's like sweet, like a, like a chocolate, kind of like a tiramisu. I wanna smell like tiramisu today. Or I'm gonna buy some Middle Eastern oud. I wanna smell Middle Eastern like money. I wanna smell like that. Or I wanna smell like tobacco, which is like spicy, which is like amazing. Like tobacco is like one of my favorites. And like when I found out what tobacco smells on like perfume, man, I was on a tobacco hunt. So find something that's a little bit specific so you'll learn about that dimension of niche perfumes. Buy one, just one, and you'll be fine. And last but not the least, if I had a third thing to choose, is that I would go into the hype. There's a reason for hype. It means that there's a bunch of people that really believe in this product and they think it's awesome and that's why they're buying it and that's why it's not available or it's hard to get. I would get something that's hyped up. So I've got different niche fragrances, but let me just give you like an example of this. So one of the first things I got was Bond Number no. 9 Scent of Peace, which is a mass appealing scent gets the compliments, I love it whenever I put it on, and lasts pretty long in my opinion. A lot of people are bashing this as just a better designer, but that's not true. It's actually, the performance is amazing and I love it. So this would be my first mass appealing scent when I started. Then I wanted to go specific. I went into Ouds because it reminded me of the Middle East, and so I got some Sahra Oud from Fragrance Dubois, I never regretted it, so amazing. And then I tried Reflection Man, which is rosy. I've ne I, I, when I started this, I never knew what rose really meant. Um, and I got this and totally, totally amazing scent, like to die for, super. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just great. This is like more functional because Oud would be for like, in my opinion, more um, elegant events. It, it's for more formal events, this type of Oud at least. And then I got Reflection Man out here, which is, I believe, great for like spring, summer, but I really wanna smell like rose. This is it. Then I'll do like a complete blind buy, which would be like the Ormond Jane that I showed you guys earlier. And this is like tobacco, but I, let me tell you guys, I, I've never tried this on. And when I got it, this actually beat the other ones that I already owned. This is actually one of my current favorites from my collection. And I blind bought this, so that's fine. Guys, enjoy being a member of the Niche Fragrance community and just do that. Hopefully this guide helped you with what to do um, when you're in your beginning stages of collecting and enjoying these perfumes. Let me know in the comments below if there's other tips that you want to share for the beginners in this community. And let me know if this helped you. Let me know if this helped you find your perfect perfumes. Let me know if this helped you navigate the niche world. Let me know if you made a bunch of friends in the community because of this. Either way, I'm glad that you listened to this video because this is the same steps that I went through when I started and I'm in a great position right now. I believe I've got some great fragrances, some great scents that I'm really proud of owning and I'm pretty happy using. So until then guys, Again, please subscribe. I got more videos coming your way that's gonna help you and it's gonna review some of these amazing scents in my opinion now and the way I see it. And I hope you guys, again, subscribe and we'll see you soon.